What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Curtain to Curtain. My name is Phoenix Cloutin. I am Lazuli. And we are your Jason Theater Kids, and we have a doozy for oh, you guys yeah. today. <laughs> oh, so good. I think Wait. this is one of those moments we've literally been waiting for. Truly. All season. Like, oh yeah this is one we, of those where it's like once we get here like, yeah we are yeah. talking about the one the only hades town uh, and, and hairspray and, and, hair, hairspray. and that bitch hairspray <laughs> and that bitch hairspray <laughs> which is yeah so yeah. we got we got a doozy mm -hmm. a, a double doozy all about Lover, you were gone so long. Lover, I was lonesome. Think of it as my desire. We gotta preface this by saying I think both we, of us are incredibly biased. We are going to be biased. About and honestly for me, about both of these. About both. About kind both. Of, about I'm both. not gonna lie. Not yeah. gonna lie. I grew up uh, I, I grew up with Hairspray. Hairspray was one of those movies that can that we would watch in school. It was like that, Aquila and the Bee, uh Ruby Bridges movie, like that it was one of those movies that was nice. like it's on it's on. <laughs> so, um, and then and then Hades Town is one of those man it's, like it's got what twelve toadies? Like yeah, it's crazy. It, like, it's it's, <laughs> it's what the sixtieth? Yeah, it's somewhere in the sixties or seventieth longest like running Broadway shows now. Like yeah, it it it. Oh, we'll get into it. Okay, yeah. so. <laughs> To, to start, uh, Hades Town is a sung through musical mm -hmm. with music, lyrics, and book by Anais Mitchell. If you recognize that name, that's because she's a singer songwriter uh, who uh, has, I think, eight studio albums. One of her biggest ones is uh, in America, Young Man in America, uh, and that came out in 2012. She literally came out with an album called Hades Town which mm -hmm. developed into the, the Broadway musical. Yeah. It tells a version of the ancient Greek myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. Uh, and it's got all the players in it. It's got everybody. <laughs> it's got gods. It's got men. It's got... It's got... It's got Hades, the fates. Hades, Hades himself, the fates, Persephone, Hermes. Er everybody's in yeah, here. Yeah, everybody in here. <laughs> Except for all the other gods, which yeah. I, I will say, I like that this story is isolated to just the Chthonic and Chthonic related deities. Chthonic, for those of you guys who don't know, <laughs> flexing my almost classical civilization degree. <laughs> but Chthonic is a term referred to uh, for not necessarily exclusive to academia, but it refers to gods who are involved in the death process at all mm -hmm. and everything and that's not just exclusive to greek mythology that's exclusive to that's a thing for like all religions etc etc so like this would apply to like egyptian deities i can't think of any off the top of my head who are involved in it except for Ra. but um right. uh like it's not just exclusive to them and everything but i like that it's isolated to just them because mm -hmm. I feel like if they were to include include like Apollo, the sun god, or like Zeus, which 
In the original myth for Hades and Persephone, Zeus was involved in that shit. Yes. Um, because he was the one um, who was like, oh yeah, you should take her. If you <laughs> like her, you should take her. And is Persephone is his daughter. Right. And everything. And in Greek culture, it was a thing of... Everybody likes to say Hades is the bad guy for taking Persephone. However, comma... Uh, in Greek, ancient Greek culture, Zeus is the bad guy. Yes. Because that's his daughter. And... He should not, he allowed that. He should not have allowed that. Yes, Hades shouldn't have taken her, obviously. Mm. But Zeus allowed that shit to happen. Yeah, so... Zeus allowed that shit to happen. <laughs> so Zeus, uh, as usual in Greek mythology, is the bad guy. <laughs> Zeus, is, Zeus is always the bad guy. The, yeah, anyways... <laughs> But yeah, I, I, yeah, I think what intrigued me about this show originally is that before I, before I'd ever seen it, like I was hearing mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, Hades Town. Oh, my God, Hades Town. And I was like, OK, like, you know, one of these days I'm going to check it out. Right. Yeah. And it literally came to our city. And it did. And me, I will forever be upset that I missed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> forever. Me, me me being a a Broadway, you know, member, I was like, yeah, let me uh let me go get my tickets. Yeah. Um yeah. And I was very 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 blown away because uh I I expected that it would be a musical about like a specific town. Maybe it was, you know, sort of a darker musicals. I, I tend to like darker musicals. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, I, I want to see how that plays out. Um, I was not expecting a Greek myth. <laughs> like, at all. <laughs> I was not expecting a Greek myth at all. I was expecting a very original story that was going to be a lot darker, that was going to be, you know, great music, great, you know, design or whatever. But, like, along those lines, you know what I'm saying? So when I found out it was a Greek, you know, an adaptation of a Greek, you know, s- story, I was like, okay, like my my excitement went down actually a great deal. I was like, oh, all right, let, let's <laughs> let's see what that's about. And then when I finally walked out, I was like, I might have literally seen the greatest musical mm-hmm. I've ever seen. <laughs> like, it's, it fully, and I say this with all the ir- irony as possible with one of the songs being called Flowers, it deserves all of the flowers. Yeah. And <laughs> as a person who found this musical, oh my god, I found this musical in 2019 mm-hmm. because one of my friends in high school, I graduated in 2019, I'm a youngin, but um, one of my friends was like, hey, I know you like musicals and that you like Greek mythology and history type musicals because like, obviously I like Great comment and other like historical based musicals and mm-hmm. stuff. They were like, "You should listen to Hades Town." I was like, "Okay, yeah, I'll like put it in my list of like musicals I should listen to." And I literally remember one day in school, I just was like, "Fuck it, I'm bored," because I was my senior year. And right. It was like close yeah, to the end that. of the year, and like mm-hmm. I was just senioritis to to <laughs> the extreme. So I was right. like, "Fuck it, I'll just listen to it. I'm bored." And I like live texted my friend who recommended it to me, and this would was before the Broadway version came out. So I was listening to the live off Broadway version. Ooh. I don't know if it was the, I don't know if it was a London recording right. or what have you, because I don't know. They they don't list when it was recorded. It's just a live right. recording of it. But um, I listened to it, and I was like, "This shit's." fire and then i went looking into it i was like oh that's so convenient they're going on to broadway like now yeah yeah and i was like set for the uh broadway like cast recording and everything i was like mildly annoyed they had to like break it up into chunks and everything but i was right. like you know that's fine they got a lot of music to record <laughs> i'm a little annoyed that they had to break it up but i understand <laughs> <laughs> and I was so excited to see this musical sweep the Tonys. Granted, I don't think they had much competition that year. Because uh, it was 2019. 2019, I remember being pretty good, I, I believe. I don't remember. I think Once on This Island was nominated. Oh, yeah. Amongst that, it. I don't that, remember. <laughs> but that may, have, that may have, yeah. Yeah, that may have been I was... <laughs> 
I was obsessed with this musical. Like truly obsessed with it i was like this shit's beautiful when i listened to it the first time in high school i had to hold myself back from sobbing in the middle of class <laughs> once i got to the ending even though i know the ending right right and they tell you the ending. they tell you the ending. <laughs> they tell you this shit's going to be sad <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was still Sobbing. Yeah. And then when the Broadway recording came out, I sobbed even more. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, and it just it was such a nice way to relive sort of kind of my Percy Jackson obsession, which ironically, we are recording this on Percy Jackson's birthday. What? Yeah. <laughs> ironically, we were recording it on Percy Jackson's birthday, and I didn't realize it until the Percy Jackson show TV show account posted was like happy birthday Percy and I was like what that's funny <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah this musical features legends such as Andre De Shields mm -hmm. Amber Gray mm -hmm. Patrick Pay mm -hmm. Eva La Eva Nobilizada mm -hmm. Reeve Carney mm -hmm. like just a banger after banger after banger and specifically amber and um patrick who play um persephone and hades respectively have been with this musical since almost the beginning yeah just about I yeah think. like they obviously had their breaks into other musicals like great comet um hunchback uh spider-man <laughs> right right um, but they've always come back to this musical, which I love because they truly embody these characters and everything. And so have every other iteration of these characters on Broadway. I need to make that a point. Like every other cast pick they have made for these characters on Broadway has been fire, even if it is stunt casting. <laughs> it's been good shit. It's been good. It's been good shit. It's, it's, it's interesting too, because, um... Normally, I hear about a musical that, like, debuts on Broadway, and it's probably had about, I would argue, about three to four years yeah. of development before it hits Broadway. This is had 10. Yeah. This was a journey yeah, to get this Yeah, it started thing. as the album, and like, then it I went believe, like, it started Broadway. in, like, 2005 or something. Yeah. Like, it was a long, long, long journey. time of development. It, it, it started as, like, a... A, like side like you know how people say oh off off broadway yeah nah, this thing was this thing was all the way on fucking a hundredth street like it was it it was so off it was it was not even in new york proper yeah no like, it wasn't <laughs> like, yeah it's like, gone it started through. in a backyard, honestly. Yeah. Like, like... like, it started as a concept album, and then it went to off-off-Broadway, and then it went to London, and then it went back to off-Broadway, and then back to London, <laughs> and now it's in uh, Broadway, and it's now gone to Korea. The Korean production right. has started. I've seen uh, clips of a Korean production, and it fine. also looks good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> it's yeah. just yeah, it was it's insane. It's truly a moment. It, yeah, because um, I'm like, especially for Anais Mitchell, who like yeah, like literally came up with this fifteen mm -hmm. twenty some odd years ago. Yeah, and like couldn't like was writing it, couldn't really get it right. Yeah, knew she had it, but couldn't really get it. Quite Struggled literally to... embodying embodying Orpheus, right? Because the entire musical, he's looking for the for the plot. <laughs> yes. Uh, the plot. Sorry, this is so. <laughs> we're we're all over the place on this one. Um, but yes. The plot basically, like we said, it follows the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice, which is basically Orpheus is the son of a muse who is a um spirit type creature mm -hmm. that embodies um the arts mm -hmm. essentially. There's there's like nine of them, um, but they embody the arts and philosophy and like abstract concepts like that that can't really right. be embodied by a god um and he finds eurydice and he's absolutely obsessed with her 
He's like, I want to marry her. She's gorgeous. She's great. I love her. Come home with me. Come home with her. <laughs> His first line is, marry me, essentially. <laughs> um, Eurydice, on the other hand, has been through shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Has been through the ringer, and she's like, mm. Ooh. fine, though. I guess. I guess. <laughs> um, and he, global warming is happening. <laughs> Global warming is happening, and Hades, this is how we get into the Hades town aspect of it, has this town um, where basically all of the dead people and people that he collects gets to work in on their on his wall and in the underworld and everything. Which is not necessarily an accurate representation of what the underworld is in this mythology, but whatever. Right. It, it serves its purpose, so right. it's whatever. But, um, anyways, Orpheus... Uh, wants to fix this because he's like, this is fucked up, you know. Persephone's leaving earlier and earlier and is arriving later and later. Um, clearly, the people in Hades Town are suffering. Like, we need to get everything back in alignment and everything. And I got, I bought a song. I'm working on a song to fix it all. Um, as he's working on this song, uh, Eurydice dies. Um, in mythology, it's due to a snake bike. It's due to a snake bite, usually. Um, in this instance, it's because she's just starving. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Hades takes her down to the underworld and everything. Um, and Orpheus is like, I gotta get her back. I want her back. So then he goes down to the underworld, um, sings, he does his little ditty. <laughs> um, Hades agrees to let them both leave if they can walk out of the underworld, but they can't hold hands or anything like that. Like, he has to walk in front of her and basically just have faith that she is behind her. And there's a lot of variations of this in mythology of, like, sometimes he's made it out the underworld, but she hasn't, But he, so he turns around, or he, you know, doesn't have enough faith in everything and turns around because she's, he's worried that she's not actually there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, variations. The point is, is that she, he does... He makes it out, but she doesn't. Uh -huh. um, and then there's there's continuations of this myth that is really sad. Yeah, because the, then, it, gets, um, it gets dark. It gets really sad because it, then um, Dionysus cults people find him and they're like, "Oh, you're so cute!" Ah, and he's like, "I'm sad. My wife's dead." So mm. then they cut off his. Yeah. And the river goddess, the river god that he was near when they, like, throw his body away or everything, finds him, and he's like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Boss Dionysus. It's like, yo, cult people just killed this man. What the fuck? And he's like, say no less. Turns him on ants. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, um, yeah, quite literally, Anais was working on a song. Right. She's Throughout, literally, quite literally. Quite literally working on a song to figure this whole thing out. And it's turned to, to such an amazing and beautiful thing. And I know that you kind of sort of dunked on Rachel Chavkin, who is the director of this musical. Great Comet. Oh, She's oh. the director of Great Comet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can see those influences, though. Because of the, the lights... Definitely. The lighting, um, oh, the, the lighting, lighting yeah. definitely the mm -hmm. use of the set. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, it has a turntable, but it's not like Hamilton where it's three rings. It's one ring, and then there's <clears throat> a platform in the center of mm -hmm. it that goes up and down. Um, so, like, just the set design and just the way that the actors carry themselves definitely is, like, that's the Rachel touch, but it <laughs> works. So it works well in Great Comet, but it works. It's like refined. It, yeah, it's, it's perfectly it's, refined. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, this musical won twelve Tonys. Um, correction, correction. It no, was it won nominated nine. For it was nominated 14. for twelve. Got nine. It was nominated for fourteen. Ah, and won bad. eight, eight. I believe. I know, eight or nine. Uh, I know one, it's like two, one of the few musicals that's like one like. The most amount of Tonys. Yeah, eight. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, so Rachel won uh, best direction, uh, won best orchestrations, mm -hmm. sound design, lighting design, scenic design, uh, best performance by an actor in a featured role for Andre the Shields, mm -hmm. of course, uh, best original score and best musical. 
I think that Eva should have gotten best actor. Eva was nominated. Ava was nominated. Reese was, was nominated. Amber was nominated. Was. Patrick was nominated. Like the David entire. David who did the choreography. Yeah. I don't know how he lost. Uh, I gotta see. Uh, ain't too proud. But oh yeah, yeah. we should yeah. add that to the list. Too but, late now. Uh, still but crazy. yeah, <laughs> just it's it's such a beautiful musical and it ties the whole history of hades and persephone into this so well because it's a reflection of their own relationship right and everything um which is why they're included in the first place i mean obviously they got to be included duh but like <laughs> right. the way that they're included as like orpheus and eurydice being like how they were when they were young and everything mm -hmm. and then when you get to like epic three <laughs> And like, wait for me, reprise. And he's like, he's like, oh, it's time for spring. We'll try again next fall. And it's like, oh. <laughs> like, there, there are so many moments in There's this, so in this many. particular musical mm -hmm. where it's like, it's either rapturous joy. Yeah. Or it's like heartbreaking yeah. agony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you're just like, oh my god! Like I've never been on a roller coaster like this yeah. of emotion where I'm like, oh my god, I'm so high! Like mm -hmm. I'm so high on this, and then I come down hard, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, hard, it's... and then and then somehow get brought back up, yeah, like, like slowly, I get mm -hmm. brought back up slowly, and then I'm like, oh, okay, we're there, and then I get high again, yeah, and then. Bam! Yeah. Like, it's just, oh my god! It's it it's it's not jarring at all. It really just. I know that was one of your criticisms for Great Comet was that it was just too jarring, but yeah. like, it's very smooth. Smooth. Flow. <laughs> it all flows together and everything, and yeah, like, it takes you on these highs with like you know way down Hades Town. Yeah. <laughs> and living it up on top, it up on top and chant <laughs> and everything and then you get down to, and like our lady of the underground and everything Man. and then you get to flowers ah. <laughs> uh, and you get to if it's true uh. <laughs> and you're just like oh, <laughs> ow shit <laughs> Like, who did this shit? <laughs> yeah. And then, like, like it just, it's it's beautiful. It's amazing. It it's really... amazing. If you have not, I know that we're going to sound so annoying because everybody on Broadway is like, you need to listen to this musical. You need to listen to <laughs> this musical. You need to listen to it. Wait me. I'm as high and wide, cinder bricks and razor wire, walls of iron and concrete, hound dogs howling round the gate, those dogs will lay down and play dead, if you got the bones, if you got the bread, but if all you got is your own two legs, just be glad you got it. And if yeah. you ever come across a production of it, you need to watch it. Man, like, and I, one hundred percent on that because, uh, I, I had put this in my my Broadway playlist, but I was like, yeah, I can't listen to it until I like actually see the musical. Right. I feel like I don't, I won't know. I feel like you can't really get the story, mm -hmm. uh, without seeing it. Yeah. So when I saw it. Yeah. Like, I was just like, I I needed that because that that really kind of completed my mm -hmm. appreciation for for this musical because I was like, there's so much incredible like details, yeah, uh, that are done in mm -hmm. in in the performance. That's like insane. And of course, yeah. like if you if you know anything about Greek mythology, it it also just adds that flavor to it yeah. where you're like, oh, I can see that. 
in the way mm-hmm. that it translates sort of like what is mythology and kind of places it in a sort of semi reality mm-hmm. that I also kind of like, like. Yeah, and I love that it's set in like this like thirties, twenties speakeasy yeah. type deal and everything. Yeah, it's that such was... an odd setting, but, but it, it works. works so well. <laughs> and I mean, and then you got oh, oh boy, Andre the Shields who brings something so magical to Truly. that like, like, like that particular style that you're yeah. like oh my like god like him as hermes and like i said every other iteration of hermes has also been chef's kiss also mm-hmm. has been amazing and everything like the original hermes in the live brought like in the live recording yeah solid it was really um, good andre's hermes um when they yeah. included i forget their names but when they included um she was in the ways. Uh, Melanie Labari. Yes, when they yeah. included her. Yeah, she's like great. on Broadway. Like all of like, like I said, every other pick, stunt casting or not, has just genuinely been really good. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't I, like again because I'm so not used to this. Like Cabaret is also one that does this, where yeah, there's an MC, you know, someone who takes you through the story Mm -hmm. and it's so unusual to me because usually that you're being taken through by the lead character or something like that um but because he does that like it's such a man i can't i can't put it into words it's such a brilliant perspective and Mm -hmm. and encompassing over this entire story like yeah and it and it's so I, like one of the things that I love it, that they do is when when we kick off and we got the it's a sad song it's a, you know what I'm saying it's a, it's a tragedy and you're like you're, you're jamming and then yeah. as it comes to that that moment he's he brings back, it back up again and he's like it's a sad, it's a sad song. song it's a tragedy. tragedy and I was like oh my god yeah. and then, at the end, at the end. Yeah, at the end, it's... because Razor Cups, the last song of the show, yeah. doesn't play hi, doesn't play before the curtain call. It, right. They do it after yeah. the curtain call and everything. Like, truly the end of the musical, they have Razor Cups and everything. And it, that, oh. line, that line where he says, we're going to sing it again. Yeah, we're like, going to sing like, it again. Yep. I'm done. I'm like, yeah. what? Like, it's yeah. so, like, and then again, going back to my original point of, like, Anais writing this, I'm like, I see why it took so long because mm-hmm. the perfection that you yeah. get when you, man, I can't, I, I'm telling you, I can't put it into words. I, you the can't. Perfection and the fact did. that, like, there's still line changes being made man. and everything. Like, I know well, that when, um, uh, Jordan, uh, not Jordan, Jordan I, yeah, Jordan Fisher joined and everything. I saw a clip of him doing Epic Three, and they mm. changed again some of the lines for it and everything. Mm. I forget what lines, but it's after the whole chorus joins and everything. Right. Like those lines were changed, and I was like, nice. yeah. 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 Like it's well, still being worked on. It's like a work in progress still. Still. But like. <laughs> It just, it just keeps, it's it like get, wide. It's so good. It just man. keeps getting better. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous how yeah. good it is, man. It's, like, it's insane how and this beautiful is a, you, this and is amazing really, show this is. Right. So this made it to Broadway in 2019. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God. It made it to Broadway that's, in 2019. That's only five years ago, guys. Yeah. Like, it's only five years ago. And huh. like. Like, right, right. Uh, and I'm like, I hate recency bias. I yeah. really hate recency yeah. bias. Uh, like, yeah. Like, like, damn. like, I just, I don't know how you could, f- there, there's, there's not been, at mm-hmm. least, at least until we get to the most recent Slater nominees yeah. that we got coming up. Um, I just, I don't think I've seen a show that's literally jumped into what I would consider like mat not I hate to use the word but masterpiece level yeah. 
like recently. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like because recently. there's been a lot of good musicals. There's recently. been some great stuff. Some no awesome musicals it. lately. But, but like, like this is truly <laughs> on another level. This is this is up there, Phantom. This is yeah. up there company like, in my mind this is up there mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying with the ones that you're like i know that this will endure for decades yeah it's up there yeah <laughs> like i wouldn't be so like it's already up there because it's been on broadway for like five six-ish years already i wouldn't be surprised if it lasted another five more oh yeah at all oh yeah at for all. sure yeah like, it's one of the few musicals that made it through COVID, yeah. which was a hit to every musical, like, including <laughs> this one and everything. And it just, yeah, I just. Okay. So <sighs> this. Whew. Gotta pick our favorite child. This is, this is about to be the hardest top five the we've ever done. hardest way to pick my favorite child. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I'll start. So All give, right. give you some time. <laughs> Uh, to 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 marinate on this. Oh God, why did I say I'll start? Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. I normally, I'm the one who's like, and here's five and to one. Yeah. I'm with Lazuli on this one. Uh. This this is no particular order because <laughs> this this is insane. This is such an incredible incredible, uh, just collection of songs. Oh, Jesus. Um. Let me just start with one that i know is just insane that i love and yeah it's it's got to be chant man <laughs> like yeah, like, yeah. Chant is so damn good so bro. good i love and i the love the changes thing. they made yeah yeah i love the hell out of that thing mm-hmm. um i love the hell out of uh why we build the wall oh god I love yeah. that thing so much. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, of course. Road to hell. Obviously. <laughs> Come on. Of course. <laughs> like, uh, 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 ah. Yeah. Let me just go ahead and say it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait for me, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, that that that's yeah, happening. That's and, some fire shit right there. Yeah, and I, I God damn it, man! <laughs> All these things are so good. I, yeah. I genuinely. <sighs> yeah, I can't. epic three, man. Epic yeah, three. epic three. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's so many more, but like I'm yeah. a, I'm gonna strictly keep it to five. I am not. <laughs> Um, because if I, gotta I, if agree I go with... further, I'm gonna name yeah. a whole fucking sound. <laughs> I agree with you for chant. Yeah. Um, epic three. Yeah. Both wait for me. Yeah. Because well... I love wait for me too. I love the wait reprise. Um, his kiss the riot. Ooh. I love from like a compositional standpoint. Mm-hmm. I, I feel you. And on everything that one. because it's so discordant and everything it just it really grates your gears and it yeah. gets you into the headspace of Hades how he's like yeah he's done all this shit and everything but he's not gonna fuck up my shit <laughs> he's not gonna fuck up my people and everything right. I and like you know it, this is after like you know the fates are like he's a man <laughs> yeah let him go but you know just fuck with his little mind <laughs> mm-hmm. And everything, like, ah, oh, good. Um, and on next to that, doubt comes in. Oh man! Oh, <laughs> oh man! I... The harmonies between Reeve and Eve on. Oh my <sighs> god! Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. It's beautiful. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry, I didn't pick. Uh, that. <laughs> um, how long? Mm. It's a new song that was added right. to the Broadway version, and it's such. I love its inclusion Mm-mm. so much. I love, I love it. It just, I, flowers. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was gonna pick that one too. Yeah, <laughs> like there's just, oh my god, living it up on top. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Our Lady of the Underground. My oh, yeah. fault. <laughs> my fault. 
Our Lady of the Underground. Our Lady of the Underground slaps. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, it's just banger after banger after banger. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, I know, I know. It sounds like we're we're really loving on this musical, and we are. <laughs> we are. But like, it. It's one of those things where it's like if once you see it, you believe it. Like because yeah. it's insanely it good. It's so is. incredibly well written. Mm-hmm. Like she mentioned, like they're still like editing stuff, but it's so perfect that you can. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you can touch things up and it still works. Yeah. Like I I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I I truly love it. <laughs> so My children, my children, why do we build the wall? Why do we build the wall? We build the wall to keep us free. That's why we build the wall. We build the wall to keep us free. How does the wall keep us free? My children, my children, how does the wall keep us free? My children, my children, who do we call the enemy? Who do we call the enemy? The enemy is poverty, and the wall keeps out the enemy. And we build the wall to keep us free. That's why we build the wall, we build the wall to keep us free. Oh my goodness. All my right, grade. So- yeah. For this is S S S S S plus. This is in a <laughs> this is in a ranking all of its own. Yeah, like this is this is a certified classic. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. 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 It's in it's in the S tier. There's no yeah. there's no getting around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This S-tier. is this is in its own tier called Hades Town. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is man. I feel like is going to be the new gold standard. Oof. For modern musicals. That's rough. Like, yeah. That, like, I really truly believe that this is a very hard place to to get to. Yeah. And I, I, I don't and think And there's been fair. a lot of good modern musicals. Like, I like to dunk on Hamilton, but it's a good musical. Yeah. Like, and everything. I, but it's not there. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm like, I don't know if this can be the standard because no one will reach it. <laughs> like, like. You know what I'm saying? Like that's it'll be fair. It'll be that's really, fair. really hard for like, anyone to reach. It. Like, yeah. like let's set the standard at Hamilton. You can reach <laughs> that. Like, I think that's possible, but like, no. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it just, yeah. It's, yeah. That... It's truly a moment, and I am so excited for its legacy. Yeah. Same. I'm excited same. for the legacy it's going to bring on. I'm so bummed out we don't have a pro shot. I know that there was discussions about making a pro shot, and it ended up falling through because of financial reasons and everything. Oh, because man, we, everybody we, wanted to get paid their fair share for okay. it and everything. Understandable. Which is like, fair. But also wanted it to be like on the level of the Hamilton pro shot, which was ooh. very expensive. <laughs> yeah, that thing cost money. <laughs> that thing cost money because they had to, because that's multiple performances. Right. Cobbled together Cobbled and everything. Together. Um, uh, and all that fun jazz. So I get why they couldn't do it. I hope in the future they come back to it. Please, I, need it. I will take <laughs> any cast at this point because they're all good. Like I would like the original. I, I, don't know about any ca- I mean, I get it, but uh, a correction. I, just... I will take any of the Broadway casts. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, Cause... It's, it like because. Because the pro shot is an immortalization. Like, yeah. I'm like I kind of need the original cast. I would love that. to have the original cast. Yeah. That's the ideal, but... I don't know. But, yeah, I get it. Yeah. All right. So, 
We move on from Hades Town, certified classic, to another kind of also certified classic. Yeah. Uh, hairspray. We hairspray. is as Lazuli so eloquently put it, that bitch. <laughs> she is that bitch. Like <laughs> I remember seeing it on the list and I was like, oh it's hairspray, whatever. Cause it'd been so long <laughs> since I engaged with it. So I was right. like, oh yeah, hairspray, I know that. I sang it I sang a couple songs from it from choir, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like I knew I know hairspray. Like I, mm -hmm. it's one of the few that I grew up with and everything. But like when I I went to watch it again, I, and I watched the two seven one two thousand seven one. Mm -hmm. I think it's the one that I grew up with, but I'm not entirely certain. It might have been the eighties version. Like I have memories of both, right? And everything, and I was like, "Wait a minute, this looks so pretty good." Uh, yeah. Like I was like, like listen when I when we got to the opener, like Good Morning Baltimore, I was like. It's like, hey. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then it kept going, and I was like, okay. Mm -mm -mm. okay. And, like, it's got, like, the movie uh, specifically has, like, a lot of good people in it. Like, it's got funny cast casting, like, John Travolta yeah. as Edna, which is so well, silly. See, what's interesting about John but Travolta's casting is, like, uh, I think aside from maybe one or two versions, um, I think he's I, been with the musical the entire time. No, not just that, but like, um, I believe that Edna's always played by a man in in drag. I believe. Oh, that makes like, sense. Yeah, that's like, silly. I, like, I know. Right? That was my like, next thing. Like, as I like started texting my friend, my friend Lavender, about this, and I was like, "Bro, I think I've seen like I was because it was during um." Oh, I'm trying to remember the song. Um, scroll back up. Uh, Welcome to the 60s. I was like, I think I have seen the Zac Afron version. Because I didn't remember Zac <laughs> Afron's presence at all, but I remember the Welcome to the 60s sequence right. and everything. And then I was like, oh, maybe not. Because, like, and everything. But I was like, listen, I was like, this is so camp. <laughs> like so very camp. It's so very camp, <laughs> but it works. Like obviously, I mean, obviously it does. It's camp. It, that's the whole point of camp is that it's right. so silly and goofy that it works and everything. <laughs> but like for the movie, you know, it's got Queen Latifah in it, mm -hmm. like Christopher Walken, and Z like I said, Zac Efron. It's like a lot of, a lot of weird casting. <laughs> but once again, it works. Yeah. And it's continued to work, obviously, because, like, this was originally made in the 80s. Yeah. And then they had the movie. And then, like, they had, like, a lot. Like, it's been, obviously, it's been on Broadway if you ever so often and everything. Like, it. She's a classic. She's a classic. She's a classic. And she's one of those few classics where I'm like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> it's so silly. And everything, especially because, like, I whole forgot about the the second act plot with, <laughs> like, the marches. And there's pride in my heart Cause I know where I'm going Yes, I do And I know where I've been yeah. Uh, yeah. And everything. I whole wiped that from my brain. <laughs> Did not remember it at all. Right. So when they were like, oh yeah, we're gonna march. Oh yeah. I, it just... And it's so self-aware. It is. It's very self-aware, especially during that when um when Girly Pop hits the uh, police officer with the sign gently. 
and he's and everybody on the news is like, yeah, he's you know in critical condition. He was bludgeoned. <laughs> he was bludgeoned. It, he was bludgeoned in the head, and you know was bleeding profusely and everything. And he's in critical condition and care and da 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 da. They're monitoring here. And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. They really they they got it. They got it though. Yeah, because they do that now. Yeah. Oh yeah. But <laughs> I. So anyway, plot. Uh, the plot. <laughs> sorry the plot. yeah so if the story follows uh tracy turnblad who is a uh, very uh excited uh you know uh energetic uh overweight teenage girl uh who really loves to sing and dance her favorite show is this show called the corny collins show which i was like i can't believe they called it that but <laughs> um and she's really high on one of the kids in the show named Link Larkin, which mm -hmm. I, I also can't believe they called him that. Uh, and, you know, she watches the show with her friend Penny. Uh, and who's they, not they, supposed to be watching the show. Who, yeah, who's not supposed to be watching the show. But, uh, and they dream of, of eventually joining the cast, right? And she's just really upbeat. She's got a really, you know, just a super energetic, uh, upbeat personality. And, uh, yeah, and she believes in the possibilities of, of, of everything. She's very, very kind, right? Yeah. And that's a genuine, genuine person. This obviously takes place in, in the 60s in Baltimore before, um, uh, integration fully took, mm -hmm. took over, uh, before the Civil Rights Act. So, um, you know, Tracy sort of became this pioneer for, uh, you know, integration, uh in in Baltimore and and as well as Corny Collins who who you know ran the yeah. show and was and was perfectly okay with it um but yeah so she wants to join the cast uh one of the parents who runs the show uh was a former Miss Baltimore Crabs which yeah. I can't believe is another title that they gave somebody um you know, it's very much against everything Tracy stands for, mm -hmm. and you know, basically she was her way, and you know, she doesn't let her join. Uh, then she goes to detention because of her hair height, which I also thought was hilarious, and she meets uh, the black kids in her in her school in detention, and there she learns, you know, basically she gets to know Seaweed, who's uh, the son of a. Uh, Mary Bell Johnson, I think Maybell. that's her name. Oh, Motormouth, Motormouth. Motormouth Maybell. Motormouth, Motormouth Maybell, Maybell, which is some of these names, man. Like, like yeah. what? Um, but yeah. And uh, they form a friendship. He eventually ends up falling for Penny. Uh, Mom and, you does know, not like that. No, of course not. Right? <laughs> and yeah, they, be, they become friends and they eventually, you know, make their way onto the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, it's a very simple premise, right? Like, okay, like, it's cool. Like, it's set in this town in Baltimore. There, or sorry, it's set in Baltimore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Baltimore is not real either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, Baltimore is a fiction. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, and it's just about a high school kids and, and, them trying to or them figuring out uh the ways of the world at a very late age but overcoming it and moving in a progressive direction as the world is changing and through music and dance what i thought i would hate about this is that it it was giving me grease vibes <laughs> it was giving me grease vibes yeah. because the music is kind of fifty best but it's it, kind of it really leans into the silliness, though, as opposed yeah. to Grease, which tried to take itself kind of seriously. Yeah. It really was like, we know this is silly. <laughs> we know this is silly. So you know yeah. what? We're going to make it camp. We're going to make it camp. We're going to go really, we're going to go hard. And here's here's the thing that also blew my mind, because I didn't realize this. Uh, I For whatever reason, I thought the musical came before the movie. It nope. turns out it's the other way. Other way. The, the movie came before the musical. And the original movie was done by John Walters, which I also found out was utterly hilarious, mm -hmm. who also did Cry Baby, which is a, <laughs> a similar movie to 
Grease and, mm-hmm. and this and yeah. all of that same vein, which also they eventually turned into a, a musical, which I have to I have to find. No, oh. um, <laughs> but yeah, so like I didn't know th- I didn't know John Waters was the one behind this. If you saw the 2007 film, John Waters has a a small cameo in it mm-hmm. that was hilarious. He plays the um the local flasher. <laughs> So I was like, oh my God, that's John Waters. Yeah. That was so funny to me. So I was like, <laughs> that's hilarious that they put him in the film. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was just all of these cool things coming together. Again, mm-hmm. like the songs, like I said, they had a little bit of 50s, but you could tell there was also some 60s yeah. influence together. But they're also so. just like more interesting. Very. They're much more interesting and like rememberable and very just <laughs> better. Better. <laughs> much far. much better yeah. yeah it's like yeah it's like they got that style but they figured out a way to like the lyrics aren't mm-hmm. horrible the, the, like, they lean I think it's because they lean into the camp yeah. there's, there's no way there's no way around it like they really yeah. lean into the camp and that's what really sells it like mm-hmm. there's like one song I believe where um, yeah I think it's it, it takes two or it, I don't know it may be that one where like uh Link is talking about how Elizabeth Taylor has a dick or something like <laughs> it was like what like yeah. they put that in the like real yeah. like so yeah it's just like you do that okay we're we're gonna we're gonna make it out we're gonna make it out John yeah. Waters is such a weird ass director so oh, like yeah. it doesn't surprise me no. like <laughs> that they th- these are the songs that they got yeah. from his movies because it's like yeah like that mm-hmm. that makes sense that it's track. just it's such a goofy movie <laughs> a goofy movie <laughs> um, but like which is also a banger but which yeah. is also a good movie <laughs> but like it just it works like it it makes it makes the setting of it feel real but also like a a, i don't want to say a caricature of like baltimore maryland in the 60s or whatever because like yeah the that's weird but like it definitely gives the vibes of like like it feels real it, it feels realistic enough while also still being campy and goofy yeah. and silly that, that was definitely my yeah that was definitely my impression it was like that's why I like the the marching and all of that when it comes in i'm like oh this feels out of place yeah. <laughs> like, kind of feels a little out of place because like i just don't know how you go from like full-blown choreographed dance numbers mm-hmm. you know singing about liz taylor's penis yeah. and and all of that to this is very like yeah. Hardcore, I mean, it, like <laughs> it makes sense. I do think it's funny that they were that Tracy was like, "We should march one time," and they were like, "Yeah, we should march about this." Uh, and then they just do it. <laughs> yeah, I it think just... it's so silly and how they're like, you know, and it creates a lot of drama and everything and. It progresses to a very silly ending, so like, it serves yeah. its purpose. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I think this was like the original film came out in like 1988. Yeah, in the yeah. 80s or something. So like, it was well removed from the actual struggle of oh, yeah. of the civil rights movement. So you you really get a sense that it's looking back on it, and mm-hmm. it's and it's kind of not really like rose tinted glasses no, but it's like, like it's sanitizing like, it not, not really that's not really the word i want to yeah. go with it's not it's not sanitized it's it's, it's romanticized yeah <laughs> like, like, yeah like and that's a that's a little bit where you're like oh mm-hmm. okay that that's why it seems so out of place because yeah. it's just like I don't know if that's the actual feeling that people were going through. Yeah. And, and also, I just love how everything's solved as soon as we start dancing. Like, right. all right. like, uh, But, like, if you see uh, Crybaby as well, like, uh, there was integration in that, in, in that movie. And that movie supposedly took place, I think, in, like, the, early, the 50s. So, like... Wow. Yeah, so it was, like... It, it's very much, like looking at it and saying we've always been here and mm-hmm. it, it's it's always been okay 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even even though we know it really hasn't, but you know, once you get out of it, you're like, yeah, let's create a world where it was pretty much always okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I feel like that's that's where they were going for, and I dig it. To, yeah, I, I dig yeah. it. But again, it just it like once it got to the heavier stuff, you were kind of like it's it's a little like yeah. Okay. <laughs> But, like, it's just, it's goofy, it's fun. Yeah. Like, if you want, like, something fun and silly to watch, like, you're just like, I want something goofy. Like, I would say watch this movie. Yeah. And, I mean, it's... You should watch it. It's harmless. I mean, like, it's not trying... You could tell, like, its central message isn't uh, racial equality. No. It's about just... It's about equity. Yeah, it's about equity. Yeah. And, and, you know, and the... and you know, the freedom to, to dance, yeah. <laughs> right? And love yourself, no matter yeah. no matter who you are. Mm-hmm. That's that's really more the in line with what I think this story is about. Yeah. Um and yeah. And like I, I like that it includes the the racial struggle. That's mm-hmm. that's great. And you get a great song out of it. I know where I've been is a banger. So like <laughs> like so yeah. Mm-hmm. It it I would say it serves its purpose. Maybe it underserves the, the, the racial stuff yeah. a little bit, but... But you're not watching it for that. But you're not stuff. watching it for that, yeah. You're not watching it for that. I yeah. think it, they would probably were like, well, it's set in the 60s, so we can't really not do a 60s-based <laughs> movie without including something like this. Right. You can, but like... You can, but I feel like in John Waters' infinite wisdom, he was like, well... Let's let's do it. Let's 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 work that in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So be weird uh, not to, you know. Like it's like you weird can, but it's weird <laughs> not to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but um, but yeah, it's yeah, fun. Pretty... Um, obviously they've got because of the banger people they got in here. It's like a good soundtrack. It oh yeah, it's a good soundtrack and everybody sounds great. Yeah, the only it's... one I was concerned with was John Travolta. Like, like I get it. Like, yeah, this is a role that is is typically played by men in drag, and that's fine. Is I don't think he has the strongest singing voice. So like, yeah. sometimes like certain songs weren't they weren't really hitting Mm-mm. like 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 they could like yeah. like they could. Uh, so that was the that was the only weird thing for mm-hmm. me. But like musically, this was some good stuff, man. This, this good stuff. It's got some this good some music good stuff. in here. Queen Latifah, of course, does her thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nikki Blonsky. Nikki Blonsky was amazing. Solid choice <laughs> for a lead. Oh my goodness, amazing. she embodies. They, they literally plucked her out of nowhere. She was working. Yeah. At, she was working at a Cold Stone, and they were yeah. like, they were like, yeah, you, you, you got the role. Like <laughs> she's such a, she's such a good dancer. Great dancer, and she's such a good vocalist. Yeah, she could and everything like. Mm. I was like, first few songs of this, I was cracking up laughing. <laughs> oh yeah, no, like, it's silly. Dying laughing. Like, it's silly. It was. It's so incredibly silly. It's it's, it's like just the funny. fact that like fucking Tracy misses the bus because she's yapping too much, so she has to take the fucking trash <laughs> truck over, and then ends up late to class anyways because she yeah. continued to yap. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh, it's just uh, it's so silly and it's so it's crazy to me because like this was uh insanely uh successful like this oh was a, yeah yeah this thing this thing did all right like mm-hmm. like honestly it was probably just as successful as um Hades Town. i think Hades Town got one more nomination but they each ended up with eight wins um yeah eight tonys Makes sense. And, uh, I see yeah. why. Yeah, I get it. Absolutely, I get it. It's Absolutely. silly. It's go- it's campy. It's silly. It it yeah. It does it, its thing. It like, does its thing. Like it if I got if I got thing. to see a stage production of this, I'd go see it. Oh yeah, and with, even when I was if I had the opportunity like, to looking up like the songs or whatever, I was seeing like a bunch of like, uh you know, high school adaptations and, and, you know, like middle off, school off, adaptations, off, off Broadway. My middle system. school did an adaptation of Hairspray. Oh yeah. Like, and you're it just was like, not that great, but you know what? They did it. 
But yeah, I mean, like, I think this is one that you can do that with. It's inoffensive enough. It's got great music in it, great mm -hmm. choreography that you can find, like, and it's got a great positive message. So yeah. it's like, like and it's, it's not 100%. like insanely difficult. So like, I could see, but like, still challenges. It's like, it's challenging for like high schoolers and stuff. Like, yeah, but I yeah. like. Like, if my school was like, yo, we're doing hairspray, I'd be like, hell yeah. yeah. Like, let's go. Like, yeah. that, that's going to be a banger. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, okay, this one might be slightly easier. This one's going to be slightly easier for this Top question. five. What you got? Um, Good Morning Baltimore. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good song. Yeah. It's a good opener. Yeah, it's a good um, opener. This is so silly, but you can't stop the beat. <laughs> I know it's so weird and silly, but it's because it's one of the songs I got to sing in choir when nice. I was little. So, like, I have, like, that just weird attachment to it. I feel you. And everything. Uh, also, it's just, like, a fun song. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Um, welcome to the 60s, of course. <laughs> it's a weird... It's a very weird sequence it is so weird it's a very weird sequence but like it's good shit yeah it's good shit it's good shit um i know where i've been obviously duh Which um one? uh i know where you've been oh yeah obviously <laughs> of course um without love yeah good shit <laughs> good shit what was that i was four I think so, yeah. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 I'm looking through the list right now because I did not write this down. I I'm so I naughty. Him. Um, I just realized who played seaweed in the movie. Oh yeah, Elijah Kelly. Elijah yeah. Kelly, yeah. I was like, I knew I recognized his face. I was like, oh, where do I know him from? Mm -hmm. Great, great performer. Oh like, yeah, tremendously good. Yeah. Um. I'm struggling to find a fifth song. This is mm -hmm. this is terrible because it's all good stuff, but it's like, hmm, what jumps out at me? Mm -hmm. I guess Miss Baltimore Crabs. <laughs> it's just silly. I it's so it's so mean. Because ah, 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 like ah. it's her being like, yeah, I was this amazing bitch. I was so cool. I was so amazing. And da 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 da. But you suck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you suck. Get out. <laughs> Oh man! You could never. Yeah. Just... You could never be Miss Teenage Hairspray. Fuck off. <laughs> that's another. That's another one I would argue is a weak point in the in this film is Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, plays Baltimore Crabs. I love Michelle Pfeiffer. Right. Yeah. She's great. Um, mm -hmm. that song is not one of my favorites because I feel like she doesn't have the voice for it. That's fair. Yeah, that's the only thing about it, but, uh, yeah, it's a solid song. I just, yeah, I would yeah. I, I would like to see a stronger singer in that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for me, yeah, Good Morning Baltimore. 100% <laughs> is in there. Uh, It Takes Two, I love the hell out of that song. That's I think it's, fair. Uh, I think it's so great. I really like the nicest kids in town. <laughs> I think that's that's a hilarious, yeah. hilarious song. Mm -hmm. Um uh I know where I've been. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can't touch yeah. it. Yeah. And uh probably I can hear the bells. I think that's fair. I vibe with that so mm -hmm. hard. I, I I do. Uh yeah, so that that would be my five. Uh I do uh, gotta show some love to uh without love and you can't stop the beat because yeah. those are bangers but those yeah bangers. we can't stop the beat is a good closer yeah it's a great closer mm -hmm. and i just love the rhythm of that song that, oh it, yeah yeah it goes hard it goes hard all right so what's your final grade i'm gonna give it an a i'm gonna give it an a too baby yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah like it's just fun it's a good vibe man yeah. and it's it's worthy of a, of its accolades i dig the hell out of it it's mm -hmm. Got a great message, good story, good music. That's all you can really ask yeah. for. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, it's stellar. I I, I dig it. Mm -hmm. I, I dig the hell out of it. So yeah, it's a, a for me. So hell yeah. All right. Two, we got two A's and two S's. Yep. Once again, we have an episode where both musicals were fantastic. It's been so long, mm -hmm. and we're <laughs> gonna so do it again next <laughs> well, we week. Got we, well, got, we got we got Hamilton and Heathers. 
Ooh. If you were in high school, this Man. is the high this is the this high is school a... combo. <laughs> because yeah. this these two literally were my dropped. high school combo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, um, the, it's the it's the mid tens. Um, you I, found musicals for the first time. It's that combo. Yeah, so it was so funny because uh, I could not find the movie Hairspray anywhere. Really, like, it is it is not on any streaming service. It's like, on YouTube TV. No, I, yes, I looked is. there too. I looked there I too. Watched they were, it on YouTube. They were TV. like, they were like. We, it's not on demand right now. We'll record it when when it comes up really? when it plays. I found the bottom. I was like, bro, because I was insane. I was like, I went, I went everywhere. I went to HBO Max. I went to Prime. I it's went to Apple Netflix. TV. I don't have Apple TV, so that, uh, there, there's that. But like exactly. every but like, other streaming like, service, I was like, crazy. where the hell is this? So I hope I can find Heather's because I need to see the movie too. Heather should be easier to find. I ho- I hope so because I really want to see. I've never seen the movie. Really? So yeah, I really want to check that out. You're in for a silly treat. Oh, I'm so excited. You're, you're in, it's not it's not a musical. I will tell you that. It's not a but musical. But they turned it into one. They turned it into a musical. I'm so excited. All right. All right, we're going to get up out of here. Uh, My name is Phoenix Cloudon. I have been Lazuli. We are, have been your adjacent theater kids, and we will see you guys next time. We are out of here. Peace. Mm-hmm. See, someone's got to tell the tale Whether or not you